Cristiano Ronaldo has completed a transfer to Juventus for a fee reportedly in excess of 100 million euros, including additional fees for youth clubs he supports. The fee is the largest ever repaid for a player over 30 years old, and the largest ever paid by an Italian club. Ronaldo is still a world-class player, but he joins a squad bristling with others. Currently, Juventus can boast World Cup finalists Mario Mandzukic, Paolo Dybala, Gonzalo Higuain, wingers Federico Bernadeschi, Juan Godrado and Douglas Costa, and prospects like Marco Piaca and Moise Keane. So where will Juventus' new big money signing fit? At Real Madrid, one of Zinedine Zidane's most impressive feats was his management of Ronaldo. He convinced him, for the first time ever, to sit games out and rest when required, partly as a result of the ligament injury suffered in the Euros. No longer a winger cutting in from a 4-3-3, based on acceleration, physicality and driving runs, Ronaldo was transformed into a brilliant striker, with his positioning, intelligence and goal threat from closer preeminent. Zidane lined Real up in a 4-3-1-2, or attacking 4-4-2, with width coming from the fullbacks or aggressive wide midfielders. Ronaldo could be more predatory, looking to pounce on crosses and play more statically. Creativity came from the midfield, with Karim Benzema and Ronaldo the focal points in the attack, but with Benzema dropping to link the play. For Portugal, Ronaldo played in a 4-4-2, generally alongside the mobile hard-pressing Gonzalo Guedes. Guedes tended to play ahead of Ronaldo in the build-up, with the captain dropping off to link the play, but more as a deep passer than someone who bursts up into space. Obviously he could still do this, but Ronaldo's movement was more about shifting play than it was about moving into space created by that shift to pose a goal threat from the return pass. Ronaldo showed that not only is he a goal threat from open play, but that he retains his devastating ability from set pieces too. Both of these systems paired Ronaldo with another striker, someone who could either do the hard running in the press, like Guedes, and move around to draw players away from Ronaldo, or, as at Real with Benzema, drop off and link play to Ronaldo, who stayed further up the pitch. While Ronaldo is still extremely fit and plays a very physical style of football, it makes sense to take as much of the physical burden from him as possible. So, how will he fit in at Juventus? Well, generally, Max Allegri has played two systems recently, a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1. Juventus like to build from the back, playing vertical passes to the midfield or to the central striker or attacking midfielder dropping in, looking to suck the opposition into the central space before rapidly moving the ball wide. They also look to overload one flank, and then switch play, especially if using quick players like Douglas Costa or Quadrado out wide. Mandzukic, one of the more versatile forwards in world football, has played either as a striker or as the wide left player, moving in to present an aerial threat in the gap on the opposition's right between the fullback and the right-sided centre-back and bringing other players in. Higuain is both a focal point and the striker who drops in, working hard to hold up the ball, move it back to an open player and then turn and burst into the box and find some shooting chances. Ronaldo could do either of these roles, although without the benefit of another player alongside him, his workload would increase from the ways in which he's been used with Madrid and Portugal. While Ronaldo is excellent in the air, he wouldn't be a like-for-like -like replacement for Mandzukic and he's less abrasively physical and less selfless than the Croatian striker who works very hard in the service of others. It seems likely, then, that his competition could mostly be with Higuain, but there are ways the two could work together. Ronaldo could play slightly ahead of Higuain, with the Juventus 4-2-3-1 looking slightly more like Real's 4-4-2. The wide players would need to cover the wide spaces a little deeper to compensate for Higuain's pushing up from the 10 space, but he is very capable of linking play and leaving Ronaldo as a front man. This role could also be easily performed by Dybala, should either Higuain or Ronaldo need a rest. Otherwise, Juventus could play a very adventurous style of 4-3-1-2, with Dybala playing off Higuain and Ronaldo. The young Argentina player is very capable operating in wide spaces, drifting around the pitch to create passing options and feeding the front two. Cuadrado could play on the right-hand side of the midfield three, with Matuidi on the left to give Juventus more attacking options, with Miralem Pjanic or Emre Chan the deeper playmaker. Should this be too defensively open, Cuadrado could be swapped out for more of a holding player, or Chan could add energy on the right-hand side of the three, getting forwards to support Dybala and Matuidi doing the same. In Alexandro and Mattia De Siglio, Juventus have fullbacks who can add width to this system, but Cuadrado could also drop back and play as an aggressive right-back should Juventus opt for the 4-3-1-2. And with covering centre-backs as capable as Giorgio Cialini, Daniele Rugani and Medi Benatia, Juventus could likely cope with this sort of attacking game. The question for Allegri then is one of system change versus rotation. If he wants to rotate, then Ronaldo can play centrally in Juventus's 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3 instead of Higuain or Mandzukic. Should Allegri want to change, he has the players to use an attacking 4-3-1-2 that would benefit his new signing greatly. 
Allegri has shown he is a capable coach, unafraid of switching tactics from game to game, and ultimately, Ronaldo will likely be used in different ways for different opponents, but Allegri has added a real weapon to his arsenal, and Juventus are an even stronger side for Ronaldo's acquisition.